Good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, President of Iceland, Mr. Ólafur Ragnar Grímsson. The story goes that when the University of California at Irvine first built its campus, they just planted grass. Then they waited a year and looked where people had made their paths in the grass and used that information to build the sidewalks. When I first realized the dramatic changes the Arctic is going through as a result of global warming, I was reminded of this story. I was reminded of it because, in a way, this is what is happening in the world of marine transport. A new path between Europe and Asia is coming to light, and soon, yes, very soon, it will be our task to build the sidewalks. The implication of these rapid changes are still, still unpredictable, and we must do our best to anticipate every possible outcome, environmentally and economically, for as we have seen throughout the history of civilization, the relationship between the environment and our economic conditions is one of action and reaction. In 2008, the U.S. Geological Survey completed an assessment of undiscovered petroleum resources north of the Arctic Circle. The assessment showed that the Arctic might contain more than 20% of all undiscovered recoverable oil and gas resources in the world. That represents 90 billion barrels of undiscovered discovered oil, 1,669 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, and 44 billion barrels of undiscovered natural gas liquids. Thus, the Arctic could hold about 30% of all undiscovered oil, 30% of undiscovered all natural gas, and 20% of all undiscovered natural gas liquids in the world. Increased access to these natural resources and others, such as renewable marine resources, fishing, geothermal energy, and mining, is focusing international attention on the region. And when you take into account the abundance of freshwater supplies that are to be found in Iceland, Greenland, and elsewhere, it is logical to assume that the Arctic geostrategic importance will continue to grow in the foreseeable future. The region is playing a more important role in world politics, and there is a growing interest toward this part of the globe by Asian and European non-Arctic states. Just to give you one example, Japan is one of the largest trading nations in the world, but a country of few natural resources. If the ice cap in the Arctic continues to shrink, the navigation distance between Japan and Europe will be greatly decreased. decreased. This may potentially cut shipping costs dramatically for the Japanese shipping industry. Seaborne trade currently accounts for 90% of world trade and is dominated by the transportation of raw materials, tanker trade, and other dry cargo, including containerized cargo. The growing importance of the trade relationship between Europe and Asia and the resulting increase in seaborne traffic between the two continents will result in further congestions and a higher risk of collisions along the existing sea routes. And their choke points, for example, the Suez Canal and the Strait of Gibraltar. During the Soviet era, the Northern Sea Route never achieved its intended importance as a transit route between the two world oceans, but in recent years, the interest in transit has increased immensely. From two vessels in 2009, six vessels in 2010, 34 vessels in 2011. This year, 270 vessels have been authorized to sail the Northern Sea Route. Arctic trans transit routes represent a new link between European and Asian markets at a time when traditional transit routes through the Panama and Suez Canal 
are approaching their carrying capacity. Furthermore, these routes are far from optimal in terms of the natural resources found along the way, and when you factor in terrorism and piracy on certain key routes around the world, the increased costs, both human and financial, are taking their toll. Concerns of sea traffic congestions, capacity and safety will only increase as the world trade is expected to grow by 75% by 2025 and the world's cargo fleet is forecasted to grow by 25% or, or more before the end of the decade from 77,500 vessels in 2008 to more than 100,000 vessels that are above 500 dead weight tonnage by 2018. I did not come here to bore you with big numbers, but I find the following facts very interesting. 80% of world industrial production takes place north of the 30 degrees parallel north latitude, and 70% of all large metropolitan areas lie north of the Tropic of Cancer, or 23 degrees parallel north. Bearing this in mind, the Arctic and its ocean has the potential in the very near future to become both a major source of natural resources and a shortcut between the world's most productive regions and lucrative markets becoming, if you will, the Mediterranean of the Arctic. Iceland is the only country located entirely within the Arctic region, and as such, it has a unique geopolitical location in the North Atlantic. Iceland is an active member of many international and intergovernmental organizations. Despite the negative impact of the global financial crisis, the Icelandic economy has proved to be strong and is still among the 2035 tops in the world. Iceland's labor market conditions are very favorable compared with the rest of the world, and as a member of the European economic area, Iceland's practices the same liberal business philosophy as the European Union. We are in the company of global leaders in sectors like geothermal energy, fisheries, IT, and for the past years, we have witnessed enormous growth in tourism. 16 international airlines fly daily into Iceland year-round, providing consistent connection between all major cities and businesses, business centers in Europe and North America. Iceland's educated population, low corporate tax rate, and European business practice make it an ideal country for trade and investment. My company, Imskip, is not a geopolitical player, nor is it in the business of mining or petroleum. We are in the business of shipping and have been for 100 years. The history of Imskip, Iceland's first major shipping and transportation company, and the history of my nation's struggle to independence are intimately connected. This isn't only a fact that Imskip is proud of, but a fact that Imskip is determined to build its future achievements on and thus live up to its legacy. Today, Aimskip Transportation Services include shipping, port operations, ocean and land transport, air freight, warehousing, freight forwarding, and expert advice on shipping and logistics. Aimskip currently operates 51 offices in 19 countries, has 68 associates in 38 countries, and has 16 vessels sailing on five different routes in the North Atlantic, one of which is the only one that links Newfoundland and the northeast of US to Scandinavia and Europe. Our network is expanding, and it's expanding very fast. In addition to our operation in more than two key ports around the coast of Iceland, all of which remain ice-free during the winter months, we are working hard on extending our operation in many other ports around Iceland and elsewhere in the North Atlantic, in Newfoundland, New England, USA, Faroe Islands, and Northern Norway, laying the groundwork for a transportation network which will meet the considerable demands of all major transportation companies and businesses operating in the world today. The company's vision is, in short, 
to be a leading transportation company providing outstanding services through a dependable transport system in the North Atlantic, offering all related logistical services needed. The experience of doing business in and from the Arctic Circle for 100 years is an asset that we cherish greatly. However, there haven't always been fair winds and following seas, quite the opposite. Unforgiving natural elements have shaped our point of view and made us tough, yes, very tough. But most importantly, it has taught us to be smart because if you are going to sail the seas, you must prepare yourself for all possible weathers. Iceland has experts on Arctic issues and know-how in the fields of winter shipping, sea transport and cold climate research. And with an educated labor market, complemented by a liberal business philosophy, the idea of Iceland playing a key role in becoming a transshipment hub for container traffic in the North Atlantic is not only practical, but also unavoidable. In this industrial Mediterranean Sea of the future, Aimskip intends to be firmly on top. As I draw to a close, I would like to use this opportunity to applaud the President of Iceland, I know he doesn't want this, but Mr. Ólafur Ragnar Grímsson for his leadership in raising international awareness of the Arctic and its issue. I would also like to thank the organizers of the conference for choosing Iceland as a meeting point. This conference, and I'm sure you will all agree, has been a great success. So far, I have had the privilege of meeting a great number of investors, scientists, politicians, and business leaders, and have in the process learned a great many things about the challenges that lie ahead. I look forward to a meeting, to meeting as many of you as I can today or in the near future and discuss these important matters in a greater detail. That is, after all, what we came here to do. I sincerely thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming, and I sincerely thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.